Whoa, yeah, okay. How much was it, Loggy? Prices. Price. Priceless. <laughs> you right, bastard. okay, hang on. What's going you on? bastard. <laughs> G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Wine for the People. Today we are doing something super fun. This is the Motley Crew tasting. We have obviously been tasting blind tasting wines on the channel for a little while now, and many people have reached out, wineries, individuals, other brands have reached out and sent us wines to, to be able to review, and we've kind of accumulated them around the place a little bit. So Lockie thought he would grab a bunch of these, uh, mix them all up, and we're gonna try and taste and tell you how much we'd spend, how much we'd buy, and what we think of them. I actually have no, no clue what they are. Neither do the rest of the boys, but uh, we're gonna be able to check out and see what, um, what we might think. Let's go. All right, uh, we have six wines that have just been uh, collecting in the, uh, in the background here. And as you can see, there's a, there's, a, there's a bit of wine. There is quite a bit of wine. So uh, let's see what we have here. Hmm. Uh, number one, it's red wine. It looks yummy. Okay, I'm gonna slow down here. I thought these were all just gonna be fun wines, but this is actually, like, the nose is just perfectly intense. Mm. A little bit flat, sort of more medium weight than I thought, but then it's got this nice spicy finish. Leaning towards sort of a light Serrari sort of vibe. Light Syrah. It's quite yummy. I'd drink this on a cold night for sure. Uh, yummy. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's a good little medium bodied red. It's got that kind of like GSME Grenache thing. It's pretty medium bodied, pretty approachable. There's not really much I can say more than that. It's just a quite a delightful little medium bodied red. It's a big tick from me. I quite love it. Mmm. Mm-hmm. Mm. The palate weight and shape's really interesting. So there's enough acidity here, but also fruit ripeness. It definitely feels like a natural acid line because there's just so much amazing sort of definition to the fruit weight when it hits the palate. Six bottles and I'll pay blah, 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 probably 30, we'll go the magic number, 38 to start out with this week. That's one, number one. Number two, a little bit deeper, a little bit darker, a little bit more juice. It smells nice. It smells brighter than the last one. The last one did have that sort of heavier, you want to stick me in a cellar for a little bit longer, whereas this smells a bit fresher and juicier. Oh, yeah. Jeez, that is old school. It's quite, it's very decadent. It's very decadent. I wonder Cabernet, I reckon this might be like an aged Cab Shiraz kind of vibe. I don't know. Wow, that is intense. Really, really intense palette. That is like a full-blown tannin to this amazing structure. A lot of that is driven, I think, by the oak which really predominates the, the flavor of the wine. I'm not too sure, it's quite a low acid red wine. This is sort of more classic Australian, potentially also Spanish, like Southern Spanish. Fair bit of tannin in it, oh, quite a lot of tannin actually, and still a bit of spice. Uh, I think it's definitely an Aussie producer. Yeah, it's spicy, it's earthy. I quite like it, it could be, I don't know, it could be a bunch of different things as well. It could be like a Spanish kind of table blend, South Pacifican. I don't know, it's, got, it's quite dusty. It's got that dusty South African vibe. I would drop, look, I'd drop $35 a bottle and I'd buy like two bottles. Um, one to show a couple of mates that are kind of like into this style and then another to, to leave in the cellar and pull out in case those mates come back to my house. My number three. It's a really interesting category. Oh, hang on, there's bubbles in it and there's actually still bubbles in it. I never get to actually have bubbles. Real gentle, real yogurty. Ski yogurt. It's got it's absolute ski yogurt, like rice puddingy kind of character as well. Could be wrong there. Very creamy palette. Not too sure what to make of it. I mean, to be honest, if you gave this to me and were like, you know, what are you gonna do with this? I'd I would just I mean drink it out of tumbler. This is a very easy drinking, sparkling white wine. Um, not too sure what the variety is. Oh yeah, yeah, love that. 12, definitely, uh, I'm sparkling shard is my coal. And it's like quite salty, got that lemon curd, like it's got that kind of, it's got that lemon meringue kind of vibe to it and just like ski yogurt. I mean, leaning towards classical Chardonnay. Beautiful, beautiful wine. Not a lot of complexity here. Would have liked to see like maybe a little bit more time on these, but the bubbles are nice, smooth on the palate, and then the finish, you just get that little bit of oak. Pretty confident in sparkling Chardonnay there. I'll be surprised if I'm wrong, but you know. Bartenders and stuff would love this to mix into spritzes. This is the, the sort of everyday drinking sparkling that isn't Prosecco. <laughs> It does just have those characteristics of sort of like a larger, warm climate Australian red wine. Uh, like it smells a little bit hot, it smells ripe. It's got a savoury swagger to it. 
there's a bit of like a, an old world breathiness, but it's not like bad. It's there, but it's not, there's something I'm gonna really sting it for. Gorgeous palette weight. Again, very similar to wine number one. Feels like a natural acid line. Has that slightly uh, salt of the sea, uh, yeah, briny, fishy thing going on, but it's kept in check. There's olive tapenade, there's not heaps of tannin, not a bunch, I don't think. Just because we're here at, in, in Unicozello and there's all these Unicozello wines behind me, I'm gonna go Nero. Davola, uh, because it reminds me of something like that. Uh, and I'm gonna go three. You're kind of like feeling it out a little bit more. And this makes itself so much well, more well known than the previous red wine did, which was very just blocky. Whereas like the first wine and this wine are just like such intricate, you know, finely detailed, highly defined um, palette weights and shapes. Very cool, love this. Pretty mild tannins, a bit spicy. Syrah, Aussie, I'll have six of them just because it's not exactly my style still. And that'll be $40 a bottle. <laughs> Number five, that's a really lovely golden color there. Really lovely golden color. Um, aged or oaked or both, uh, I don't know, but it looks quite nice. Yeah, exactly what I was thinking. It literally is like drinking bone dry wine, but it has the flavors of this sort of, sort of pom fruit with a great amount of creaminess um, to it from this batonage effect. Great autolysis, amazing acidity, nice amount of sort of like powdery, crunchy tannin at the end. That's perplexing. It smells like Chardonnay, looks like Chardonnay, and then doesn't really taste like it. It's much more uh, acidic on the front of the palate. Yeah, yum. Chenin for me, you know I love my Chenin. 12 bottles, 70 bucks. I think that's a great little Loire style Chenin. We've got some kicking around here. Um, but damn, I think that's delicious. I think that's such a good wine. Very fun wine. I said in, in a different context, that sort of batonage element, I probably would sting, but because the wine actually leans into these flavors, I think artistically it's, it makes sense. It's the acidity that I love. The acidity there is just so beautiful. Ah, stunning. And then finally, finally we have a, a red wine with very sort of almost like um, dark, very dark um, intensity, brown hued. It smells like, uh, it kind of smells like a combination of uh, salami and anchovies, to be honest. Like it does have this sort of meaty thing in there, but then it does have the sea breeze coming along with it as well, um, which I've got to admit I'm kind of into. This is uh, this is past the cliff, unfortunately. I really don't enjoy this. Yeah, it's got this like olive, like earth, and there's not enough fresh fruit to back it up. I want I want the vibrancy. I want the energy. It just finishes like really like flat and bitter and boring, and then yeah, not into it. Uh, so I wouldn't buy any. Um, you probably wouldn't pay for it, to be honest. You'd probably have someone give it to you. 40 to 45 bucks, uh, and I'd buy three bottles, mainly because, uh, not that's a bad wine, it's a fantastic wine, great expression, just uh, don't need more than three bottles. Oh yeah? Yeah. It's like, a, it's an old red wine. That's, it, it's, it, I don't think it's outside of its drinking window yet. I think it's probably still got a little bit more time because you can still taste the fruit in it. It hasn't completely died out. Uh, which is a shame, but the rest of the lineup was pretty solid. I love that fifth wine. That fifth wine is awesome. Um, and yeah, so let's get the boys in and have a, have a little chat. Okay guys, we are back. We've got six wines. What did you think the Motley Crew? I think there was one real highlight in here for me, uh, which was the little sparkling number that we dabbled in. The mm -hmm. rest of them, nothing too offensive. Yeah, mixed bag. I mean, it was just the leftovers pack realistically this week, wasn't it? Well, it was, it was no, it was stuff that people have sent us. Excellent news. All right, well, apologies <laughs> for calling your stuff leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> leftovers from other people's sellers. It's, it's leftovers from other people's sellers. Yeah. Uh, we've had uh, individuals send us some wines. We've had uh, wineries send us some wines as well. Beautiful. Um, so we, we thought, or Lockie thought, we'd throw, throw them yeah. together to see what we thought. Any standouts for you? One standout for me. Mm. One standout for me. Cool. Um, two, uh, two standouts, one, two for very different reasons. All right, mm. well, first wine, what do we think? Yum. 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 Like a light Sorari sort of thing. Like it's got a bit of spice in the back end, but uh, mm. nothing too crazy. The tannin was pretty in check. Yeah. Medium bodied, juicy red that fits the need of that. Yeah. This, this was almost my wine of the week. There you go. I could have, I could have almost grabbed this as wine of the week. Just the, the cool fun thing with this is this sort of like, the acid definition mm. on this 
You smell it, it's juicy, it's fun, but when it hits the palate, it, it literally just fills the entire palate with this like, remarkable juiciness. Mm. Um, yeah. It's, it's a very, good. it's a very, very good wine. Mm. Uh, it's not like, it's not mind blowing, but it's just so pleasant to drink. Yeah. Super solid. Yeah. I had uh, six bottles for 38 bucks. I had six for 33. I had 12 for 50. 50. How much? Big fan. Oh, that's just delicious. What you Minimum wines. Yeah. Sangiovese. Sangio. I'm fine. I'm filtered. No sulfur. Oh, low sulfur. Well fermented. Uh, Pretty labels. Victorian oh. B Corp winery. Uh, mm -hmm. The second B Corp winery in Australia. Just remember who was first. <laughs> um, uh, and Very yeah, cool. these guys make uh, really lovely people, make some really good wines. And uh, this is definitely, in my opinion, this is their best wine that they do. Uh, lovely, <laughs> juicy, delicious. and showcases the San Jose is the shit. And 30 bucks. I drink the shit out of that. Yeah, I drink that. I drink the shit out of that. Something that I would struggle to drink the shit out of is this next wine. Oh, I definitely got it wrong then. <laughs> because I thought it was Nebbiolo because it just had that tannin in it. But uh, you love Neb, so don't think I'm right there. It's the oak. It's, it's old school. It's old school. Like yeah. it reminds me of like old school Australia. It could be like Spanish or something like that. Because it, yeah, there's a pretty liberal use of oak, but it doesn't mean it's a bad wine. It's a good wine. There's no, there's no ifs or buts about it. It is a good wine. It's just not something that I generally reach for. Nah. If I had the choice of chocolate milk or this. I'd choose just the chocolate milk rather than the thing that resembles chocolate milk. Oh, why? Well, yes. If we're going to hold these wines to the standard, would I rather drink chocolate milk? Then, <laughs> then, well, let's not even do the show. Let's still go down let's there. Just, yeah. Let's just do still, uh, chocolate milk for the people. I, I, chocolate milk for the people. We should do a non Alex episode anyway. We could do a milk for the people episode. Milk for the people. All the alternative milks. Um, I, nevertheless, I actually bought two bottles of this. I wanted 30, 35 bucks, hopefully. Uh, I went three bottles for 65, uh, probably worth kicking around. Yeah, I went three for 34. It's sometimes dad comes to my house, he likes things like that. I don't. This was my fine. sort of vibe. It was like, yeah, this would be wine. a wine that I would buy to give to people that probably don't appreciate the wines that I drink on a daily basis. Yeah, they like different things. Yeah. It's dad wine. I'm yeah, dad one. How much? I haven't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, we yeah. had this the other week. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so I actually thought this could be, could be Spanish. Yeah. Um, Espanada. It, it Tempranillo. It feels so oaky. Yeah. It, the it, other week. Yeah, mm. I think this is the, the modern bent of. Well, the, this is how the world's going. All of those really oaky old school styles are starting to fade out. Like, and this is, you know, T Tempranillo, um, particularly from the Duero, 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 is like pretty known to be quite oaky and that's turning more into more bistro fruit, fruit forward styles of wine. Mm. So that's really good to see. Um, <laughs> but yeah, not my, no, Tempranillo, not my bag. Yeah, yeah, I've seen some I love and don't love, but something that I do love, next wine. Wine number three, bang, sparkling Chardonnay. I quite enjoyed it. It's, it's, it's yogurt. Yeah. I, I, I had six. It's ski yogurt. Yeah, I like that. Again, if we're doing chocolate milk and yogurt, I'm here. Like, I, I mean, it's dairy not, products. I yeah. wouldn't list it alongside like Prosecco and it's not, it's not, you know, champagne obviously. No, it's not no. the autolytic or anything on the nose. Um, I, I mean, as a, like if you're a bartender and it's like cheap and it's like, you can mix it into a spritz. Like this is, I think this is absolute quaffing sparkling wine that's done quality. Like if that, if that's anything sub sort of 25 bucks, I think that's fantastic. If it's north of that, I'd kind of be a bit concerned. Um, it smells funky. It smells like I don't, wouldn't like it, but then, yeah, I don't know. It's just creamy and nice. And it does smell like breakfast. Yeah. Not my flavor, not my kind of bubbles. It's a down driver, I think, as a style. Uh, I'd rather, like. I'd rather walk. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, one for 30. Ooh, rough. Yeah. Uh, I had six for 28. Yeah, I had 12 for 55. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. What How much is it? Hey. Oh, bargain. <laughs> Absolute <laughs> bargain. <laughs> Yeah, I think fair price point. Very fair. Talari. Talari. Shannon Petnap. Leave it still. Petnap. Leave it still. Shannon all day. Well, it can be Shannon. There is sparkling boobies. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, from uh, I mean, it's not this. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's, this it's is quite Petnap. different. I mean, cool. I think that's my that's one of my favorite pet nats that I've ever had. I'm not gonna lie, like that's, that's fucking cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, it just in terms of some of the if you've displayed a bunch of pet nats in front of me, there's a bunch of them that taste sort of similar in a way that I don't like. That's different in a way that I do like. So. Yeah, 
Oh look, yeah, there's no, there's nothing wrong with the wine. It's just the flavor is not for me. It's, yeah. just, it's just too yogurt. Hey, been there, brother. Mm. Been there. Yeah. No, well, yeah. No, that's <laughs> yeah. The, that's the joy of wine. So moving on to wine number four. I love this. One of them has to be a Syrah, doesn't it? Yeah. Something does. Maybe. One of them has to be. <laughs> eventually. I, I think there's a Syrah here, but I don't think it's this. Ah shit! Well, um, I didn't cover last one. But Syrah. I I was kind of like it's a bit of a stylistic swing for me because I don't usually go for for this wine, but this wine and the next one I I really enjoyed. I thought this was actually really quite nice. This is so pretty. Yeah, super pretty. It's Again, has that similar sort of effect as this first wine where it's just the acidity is just so well balanced with the fruit weight. Um, uh, yeah, just uh, absolute, yeah. Bonkers little wine. Bonkers yeah, it's six for 40. Wine. This is probably my second in the lineup behind the Shard. Well, how not Shard. How perfect is that tannin? It's just perfect. Fine, it's just fine grain. detailed and just, just it's perfect. Definitely 4K, maybe 6K. Yeah, I'm going 10K. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, look, I had 38 bucks and 12. I was at three for 40. Ah, uh, yeah, six for 40. Hey. hey, 38, magic number. Got it. Bang, magic number. Oh, Maggie. 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 Oh, that's cool. Cute little label. That, that is, is from Heathcote. Heathcote. Uh, Syrah. Hey! hey! One of them has to be Syrah. One of them always has to be Syrah. That is fantastic. I don't think he gets it for that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely this, fucking The wine Syrah. It's the most tokenistic crown. No, it's not the most. You call it Syrah. Royalty. Royalty. And yeah, that's yeah, exactly. Royalty on the back. That's what you get from the Maggie Syrah. And yeah. I've got to admit, I'm big into dogs on labels. I'm just big into everything that it's, it's so uh, like um, unashamedly like old school. Yeah. Like it's it's the full uh, Bordeaux style bottle. It's just like the simplicity of it, but the wine itself so fun. Like generally, I've had a few Heathcote Shirazes, and I'm not massively into them. And generally, feel pretty meaty and savoury. This one's <laughs> bright and fresh and spi. It's awesome. Uh, and these were kindly donated to us by the people at Beyond the Glass. Beyond the glass. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Wine number five. This was me. Oh, it's good. <laughs> Final lineup. Final lineup. Final lineup. How good's Shannon? Oh, Shannon's dude, the, the amount of batonage on this is Lease. lit. Oh, Lease. Lease. Honestly. Lease. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's like uh, apple tart. Like oh, custard. Yep. It's just it's fucking awesome. I am just so smitten with this. It's just uh, perfect. Straight up 38 bucks and 12. <laughs> I just don't get it. I just don't. I don't yeah. get it. What, 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 what have we got there, Lockie? 29. Uh, 28. Mm. Good deal. I also mm. call it Pinot Good Gris because deal. I don't like it. It's white wine. Oh, it's Riesling. Riesling? It's Oxy Riesling no from shit. WA. Love that. This is so good. We got shitloads of this as well. Yeah. <laughs> this is awesome. We've got heaps of this. This is awesome. Yeah. Mount Park and WA. Makers. Yeah, this like underrated. Oh man, that's fucking awesome. Wine. I'm gonna that smash. Henry doesn't some... like. Yeah, oh, well, like. We could... yeah, but <laughs> probably but a good might. thing. He does. Ryan's just such a great job as well. Like, he's one of the most. Oh, it's that cashew thing. Innovative it's... winemakers. Oh yeah. Yeah, so I, that's. Um, I don't think it's bad. Nice. That's actually under floor. Under floor. There you go. There you go. It's there awesome. There you go. Now. Mm. Now. Now. Wine number six has is dead. Yeah, it's it's past its prime. I, I wouldn't. Um, I certainly wouldn't be buying like lots of it. Mm. I think it's a whole bunch of Syrah. I think it's incredibly well made, um, but it's just it's not got enough acid to hold it together any longer than this. I think it's probably just yeah. It's just gone. It's gone too far. It's <laughs> uh, it's 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 crossed the bridge. I'm like yeah, like I'm, I I can't see any. I just don't want to drink it. I, I, I love the wine. I actually bought a couple of three bottles. I wanted to spend 40, 45 bucks on it. Um, that, that is um, warmer climate or a warm vintage, uh, like Herve Savoy style, like, like a, a whole bunchy. Salami. Yeah, when it had life in it, yeah. Still, I love it, but I think definitely, I don't think it's going to be on beyond this. Yeah, <sighs> make sure you cut out all that stuff about me saying that this wine's still got a little bit left in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, this is, this is, this is, this is literally on the back of the truck after Flat, you're chat, being, uh, road cherry, kill. Like, yeah, you're back in the, you're in the passenger seat of the truck going to the nearest town, I'm a trying to figure out who's going to fix it. It reminds me of like, like there was a period of, um, around like the early 2010s. Yeah. After like 2014, 2015, it kind of stopped of this like uh, massive exploration of Australian Syrah. We saw examples like this from Larry Cherubino out in, in WA. Mm. This is like, this reminds me of Steve Panel's Syrah. Like yeah, 2014, okay. 2013, 2012, that one, the Jimmy Watson. Yeah. 
it just has no acid. Like the acids, like the fruit is now developed and evolved and the acid is just not there to hold it together. Cool, cool wine. Yeah. But I don't know. Uh, I had 45 bucks, three. I called it two old Pinot and I just left it. I said uh, six for 45 and I called it 2017 Cabernet. Whoa, okay. How much was it, Lockie? Price. Right. <laughs> Priceless. You right. Okay. Hang on. What's going you on? bastard. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is on. Awesome. That's our wine. Yeah. <laughs> Adelaide Hills Syrah from 2014, baby. From the panel vineyard. Yeah. Yeah. It's the same vineyard. Sorry, uh, Steve. Yeah, yeah. 100%. So, cool climate. Uh, 50% whole bunch. I made this wine. You did yeah, make this I did wine. I make this wine. Oh, sorry, um, dude. Probably should have t uh, tickled it up with a little bit more acidity. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that comes in bags. 2014, eight year old. Yeah, I'd, I'd drink it now, but it is definitely a little bit. Oh, it's um, past. Yeah, it's past. Sorry, bros, it's past. We did two barriques of this. This was back in the very, very early days. So this was like not even like. It wasn't even 50, made on this. It wasn't years. even made here. No, it was made in that room right there. Oh, really? Yeah, 100%. In 14? Yep, 2014. Oh, that was, that, was, that was first vintage here, first yeah. 50 dozen, there you go. Bang. Uh, yeah, back when I was big into hyperbole, 50 dozen orchestrated. Or Back when? <laughs> <laughs> Orchestrated 50 dozen Shut up! <laughs> oh my God. I would love to say that one was my one to line up, but... I reckon um, the Shiraz, eh? Hey, that's sick. Yeah, in fact, the Shiraz, in the middle, I was four. on 12 for that one. Yeah, I had six and... I was on three, but we had like good consensus. I'm he heaps down to back it. Maggie. Okay. Maggie. Maggie. Where is she? It. Maggie, one of the lineup. Yeah. Maggie, ain't well no done. dummy for this. Maggie, it's a winner. Thank you very much, um, uh, guys. We love it when people send us in wine, of course. Uh, and we also love it when Lockie likes to go through our museum stocks and just randomly insert them into lineups. Yeah, well, we um, talk some shit about it's what it's there for. <laughs> yeah. That's what museums are there Got for. <laughs> if you did decide to support the channel by sending in some wine. Of course, it will be looked at. It will be tasted, um, and we will throw together more of these. If you did like this style of tasting, jump in the comments below and let us know if there's wines that you think we should be tasting more of also let us know jump in the discord have a direct chat with us but until next week we will be here see you guys ciao